So we're now going to consider what happens when we add capacitors in series and in parallel. But let's start by recapping what happens with resistors, because as you'll see, the equations behave fairly similarly between resistors and capacitors. So let's start by considering two resistors, R1 and R2, connected in series across a battery, as shown here. Now the question we want to ask is what equivalent resistor could the resistors R1 and R2 in series be replaced with so that this circuit behaves in the same way? So we are trying to find our equivalent. Now let's start by considering the charge, the current, flowing through the circuit. Any current which is supplied by the battery must flow through both R1 and R2 as there's nowhere else for it to go and charge is conserved. So this tells us that the current supplied by the battery I is equal to I1, the current flowing through resistor 1, which is also equal to I2, the current flowing through resistor R2. So we can write I is equal to I1, which is equal to I2. Now let's also consider the potential drop across the circuit. So the battery is supplying a certain amount of potential given by V, and some of this potential is lost across resistor R1, and then the remainder of the potential is lost across resistor R2. So as an equation, we can write V, the voltage supplied by the battery, is equal to V1, which is the voltage drop across resistor 1, plus V2, the voltage drop across resistor 2. Now, we can use Ohm's law, V is equal to IR, to work out the equivalent resistance. So we can write the total potential difference supplied by the battery V is equal to the current coming out of the battery I times R equivalent, where R equivalent is the resistor that we could replace R1 and R2 in series with. So rearranging this, we've got R equivalent is equal to V over I. Now we've said V is equal to V1 plus V2. So we can say, well, this is equal to V1 plus V2 on I but I is equal to I1 and it's also equal to I2. So we can write this as V1 on I1 plus V2 on I2. And that is just equal to R1 plus R2. So this tells us that when we add resistors in series to a circuit, we can get the equivalent resistance by just summing up the resistance of each of the individual resistors. So let's now consider two capacitors connected in parallel. So we've got capacitor C1, capacitor C2, and these are connected in parallel with a battery which is supplying a voltage V. And this time we want to ask the question, well, what equivalent capacitor could we replace th these two capacitors connected in parallel with and have the circuit behave in much the same way? So what we're trying to find is C equiv, the equivalent capacitance. Let's start by considering the potential in this case. Now everything on the left hand side of the circuit is connected by conducting wires and everything on the right hand side of the circuit is connected by conducting wires. So this tells us that everything on the left hand side must be at the same voltage as each other and everything on the right hand side must be at the same voltage as each other. So it follows that we must have the same potential difference across each of those components. So we must have V is equal to V1 is equal to V2, where V is the voltage supplied by the battery, V1 is the voltage drop across capacitor C1, and V2 is the voltage drop across capacitor C2. Now with capacitors, the other thing we're going to want to consider is the charge. So we can see that on capacitor C1, we're going to have a charge of plus Q1 on the left-hand side and minus Q1 on the right-hand side. And similarly, with capacitor C2, we're going to have a charge of plus Q1 on the left-hand side and minus Q1 on the right-hand side. Now, if we imagined merging these two capacitor plates together, we'd have a total charge on the left-hand side of Q total is equal to Q1 plus Q2. And similarly, on the right-hand side, we've had a total charge of minus Q1 minus Q2. 
So now we can use our capacitor equation, C is equal to Q over V, to work out what this equivalent capacitance is. So C equivalent is going to be equal to the total charge divided by the voltage, and we've said that that total charge is equal to Q1 plus Q2. So we've got this is equal to Q1 plus Q2 divided by V, but then V is the same as V1, which is the same as V2. So we can write this as Q1 on V1 plus Q2 on V2, and this is just equal to C1 plus C2. So this tells us that when we connect capacitors in parallel, we just have to add their capacitances to get the equivalent capacitance. Now, this same method works with N capacitors. So if we imagine connecting N capacitors all in parallel, then the equivalent capacitance will be given by C1 plus C2 plus all the capacitors up to the capacitance of the nth capacitor, Cn. So let's now consider what happens when we connect two resistors, R1 and R2, in parallel with a battery which is supplying a voltage V. And once again, we want to ask, well, what equivalent resistor could we replace resistors R1 and R2 in parallel with and have the circuit behave in much the same way? So hopefully you can see that the same reasoning for the voltage is going to apply to the resistors in parallel as for the capacitors in parallel. So because everything on the left hand side is connected by conducting wires, everything on the left hand side is at the same voltage and equivalently on the right hand side, everything on the right hand side is at the same voltage. So the voltage drop across each of those components must be the same. So we can say, well, V is equal to V1, which is the voltage drop across resistor R1, which is equal to V2, the voltage drop across resistor R2. Now let's consider the current. So there's a certain amount of current, I, supplied by the battery. That current flows up to the resistors and then it can choose if it's going to go through resistor R1 or through resistor R2. Now because charge can't be created or destroyed, we can't be having extra charge which is flowing which didn't come from the battery. So we can say as an equation, I is equal to I1 plus I2 which means the current supplied by the battery is equal to the current that flows through resistor R1 plus the current which flows through resistor R2. Now, to work out the equivalent resistance, we can use Ohm's law. We can write R equivalent is equal to V over I. To make this simpler to solve, it helps if we write this down as 1 over R equivalent is equal to I over V. And we've seen that I is equal to I1 plus I2. So we can write this as equals I1 plus I2 over V, which is equal to I1 on V1 plus I2 on V2, given that V is equal to V1, which is equal to V2. And so this is equal to 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2. So this gives us our formula for the equivalent resistance when resistors are connected in parallel. So finally, let's consider what happens when we connect capacitors in series. So here we've got C1 and C2 connected in series with each other with a battery supplying a voltage V. And what we want to ask once again is, well, what equivalent capacitor could we replace the C1 and C2 connected in series with? Now, just like when we had resistors in series, the potential difference supplied by the battery must be lost across capacitor C1 and capacitor C2. So the total voltage supplied V is equal to V1, the voltage drop across capacitor 1, plus V2, the voltage drop across capacitor 2. So let's now consider the charges. We can show them on our diagram. So we've got plus Q1 on the left-hand side of capacitor 1 and minus Q1 on the right-hand side and plus Q2 on the left-hand side of capacitor 2 and minus Q2 on the right-hand side of capacitor 2. Now, I want you to consider what happens to the part of the circuit which is inside the box now. Let's consider this circuit before the battery is connected. So when the capacitors are completely discharged, 
then inside that box there is no charge. So the total charge within the box is equal to zero. Let's now connect our battery to the circuit. So the battery supplies a current, but current cannot flow across a capacitor, and current is the flow of charge. So this is telling us that there is no charge flowing into that box. So even when the battery is connected, there must be zero charge within the box. So considering the charges on the plates, we can see that zero must equal minus Q1 plus Q2, which we can rearrange to write, well, Q1 is equal to Q2. Now, if we want to consider the equivalent capacitance, what we're basically trying to do is remove that part of the circuit from within the box and say, well, what is this capacitor going to look like? So we've got our charge plus Q1 on the left-hand plate and minus Q2 on the right-hand plate, and we've just said that these two charges must be equal. So to calculate the equivalent capacitance, we can use the equivalent capacitance is equal to Q divided by V, and it's going to be helpful to rearrange that and write, well, 1 over C equivalent is equal to V over Q, and so this is equal to V1 plus V2 over Q. So this is equal to V1 on Q1 plus V2 on Q2. So this is equal to 1 over C1 plus 1 over C2. So our equivalent capacitance equation in this case is 1 over C equivalent is equal to 1 over C1 plus 1 over C2. Now, if we imagine connecting n capacitors all in series like this, we could follow exactly the same steps, and we'd end up with our equivalent capacitance formula for n capacitors. 1 over C equivalent is equal to 1 over C1 plus 1 over C2 plus 1 over the C of all the other capacitors up to plus 1 over Cn.